Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Friday again, so time for another Friday video. But this time I am changing it up a bit. Because I am showing you how I made my paper art of Veronica. As you might have read in the title. Um, so I will be talking a bit more because you might find the process interesting and I do quite some stuff already. So here we go. Just like most of my pieces, I like to start out with a sketch and work my way from that. Um, I'm sketching with a red pencil and after that I make the lines clearer and simpler with a black fine liner. Um, this way it's clearer for me where I have to cut the pieces after sketching and lining the piece of art, I copied uh, the piece multiple times so I can cut out the different parts from papers. These are basically the, the sketch for my uh, final piece. Um, I like to cut the pieces a with a bit more space. So for example, if you have the arm, I don't just draw the lower part of the arm, but I also draw the piece of the arm that's hidden by clothing, clothing for example. And the reason I do this is you have uh, some space you can stick the pieces together. And uh, it gives uh, a bit more sturdiness to the piece. And um, it gives a bit more depth because there is something underneath it it doesn't lay flat on the background for example so that's the reason why the piece some pieces are a bit bigger and well i basically cut out all the pieces from the different copies i have uh, for some pieces in this case the hair i needed quite some copies because there was a lot of overlap and overlay so <laughs> that's the reason why you see a lot of that. And I decided I wanted some extra dimension in the hair. Because first I had the curls connected with the, the, the longer pieces. However, it felt a bit flat. So I decided I would cut the curls off the big pieces of hair. And that's what you see me doing. The pieces have been cut from the copies and now it's time to trace them on some cardstock, cardboard or another color of paper. And because the head is filled with hair with such small pieces, I like to finish this one first. Uh, usually you trace every piece on cardstock or anything else and cut it at the end but because there are so many parts of hair I decided well let's finish that for part first completely um, I used a bright orange for her hair and traced as you can see every single piece on that orange color and um, I am adding a bit more dimension uh, afterwards with colored pencil but you will see that later in the video and uh, after tracing every piece on the orange cardstock I cut it out or I use my knife to uh, for the very fine details because there are they are very fine I also have a smaller pair of scissors which I use so I can make those uh, edges very nice and smooth and not very chunky so that's what I'm doing here uh, when I have every piece cut out uh, it's time to assemble um, I have some tape uh, it sticks at both sides uh, I use this because this is a bit sturdier than glue sometimes uh, it isn't that wet some glue like uh, makes the paper look very rough and and not very smooth anymore uh, 
uh, and it isn't as much of a mess as glue. However, uh, you have to clean your scissors afterwards because this uh, particular tape is very sticky and strong. It's also hard to peel <laughs> the protective layer off, so yike! My poor, poor fingers. <laughs> oh, it's not too bad, luckily. And I assemble the head completely. So there is an ear, uh, the hair. Uh, later I decided she needs two ears instead of one. <laughs> Sometimes you discover, oops, I forgot something. And when I finish her head, it's time to work on the other parts. So there's basically a lot of repetition with uh, creating a piece of paper art. You trace the pieces on cardstock and you cut them out and you assemble them finally. However, I wanted to take a closer look at the part of the legs because I used just some extra details to those legs. Um, I wanted to give her some pair of tights. However, I want it to be interesting and looking a bit more like tights. So I could pick a light brownish color. However, I didn't feel really like tights and, and I thought it was a bit boring. I went through our stock of paper we have at home and I found some nice slightly transparent paper um, it's I'm not sure what it's called in the English language however it it feels a bit like tracing paper with a color added to it so I cut out the legs first and I made them from a salmon pinkish color then I took a glue stick added the glue on the paper, on the cardstock, and then placed the, let's say, tracing paper onto those legs. And I did those, I did that for both legs. Um, after that, I tried to wrap it basically around the leg part. However, um, because there are a lot of smooth shapes basically um, and not a much straight shapes it didn't work that way <laughs> sadly oh, I tried I tried so I decided to cut those off uh, with my knife I carefully went around leg and there was a beautiful leg with a panty um, Veronica has a cat and I didn't want to depict cats in the, this particular illustration because there were already kitties on her, on her lovely dress. However, <laughs> we can show some markings because some cats like to add their nails in your legs and little cuts appear in your tights. So I went into the just freshly added uh, tracing paper and I made some small cuts and it ripped a tiny bit and it gave exactly what I wanted. So that's how I made those pretty lovely legs with little markings on them.
Sometimes you want to add some extra definition on your piece before you assemble it completely. However, I also like to add it after the assembly because uh, you know where every piece stops and ends basically. Um, for example, the hands of Veronica I did before assembling because uh, I didn't need to know the exact location with another piece. However, with the hair and the other small things, uh, I like to do it afterwards. Um, so I am giving some more definition to the hair. I add a reddish brown color to make it pop a bit more and to push some pieces a bit more in the back. Uh, I added some extra shine on the shoes. I already uh, drew with a marker, with an Uni Posca marker, uh, some details. However, it was a bit harsh and I used some white and black pencil to soften those edges a bit and to give it a bit more shine. Already, The cardstock was already a bit shiny, so it's a nice effect in real life. And another big part of the piece is the fire. So I drew the flames with the colored pencil and um, I didn't grab some references. Uh, if you want to make it look really realistic I can recommend <laughs> to go to the internet and type in the kind of flame you're looking for. So if you're looking for a campfire, uh, enter campfire. If you're looking for uh, a candle, well, you know the drill. <laughs> uh, I don't have to explain that in depth at the moment. Um, but I went with my imagination and the thing that I uh, think of when I think of fire. I added a bit more red um, and orange and yellows uh, to make it... Uh, aesthetically pleasing <laughs> basically so um, that's basically how I created the fire and and the other small details of my piece onwards to the background Veronica is ready to go but I wanted to add a bit more to this piece um, since there are some small details, uh, like little flings, basically, I want to give her a background so I can stick those small pieces on the background and stick her as well on the background. I was thinking about it for a bit and I started out with the idea um, basically like my candle lady, so with a black dark brown, lighter brown, light, lightest brown uh, background. So basically gradient. However, I was thinking in organic shapes. And um, but after a while it didn't feel right anymore. Um, Veronica had some organic shapes as well, a lot of curves. Uh, the flames are rather organic and adding another organic thing behind her wouldn't be the right way to go, I thought. So when I was looking and testing how Veronica looked on the different kinds of brown, I thought, well, I actually like the straight lines and I don't like to make straight lines and cut them because uh, I, I like the curved lines better. but. It fitted really well and it gave some contrast between the organic flowy lines and then in the background the rect rectangular straight lines. So it was time to <laughs> create it. Um, I had some beautiful paper around. I was glad some sides of the planned rectangles were very straight. So I measured and uh, cut them out eventually. Uh, with, with this kind of 
background, I like to go with guessing first. Um, I just uh, place the papers on each other and look what's nice. And if I find something that uh, suits my taste, I like to measure it out and maybe play around a bit more. But by uh, giving myself the freedom to freehand it in the first round, I am not cornered by all the measurements uh, straight away. And you can see if something works or not. If you start with measuring first and then go placing them on each other, uh, it doesn't feel natural for me. And basically I like to avoid rulers as much as possible. So that's quite hard if you are drawing perspective. How? Oh well, <laughs> you learn to it use it eventually. So after my free handing and measure, measuring things, I started to cut the different pieces of colors of colored cardstock um, after each other. So I started with the smallest part, um, then the light of the brown followed, followed by the dark brown and I ended up with the black piece. Um, after cutting them I just put them together and I put basically everything together so I, there was a beautiful piece of paper art. And after the assembling of Veronica with the background, here we are with the final piece. I really enjoyed the process and I absolutely love to work with different kinds of cardstock and find new patterns and, and just look at all the beautiful paper we have. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. I hope you find the video informative and just go make some beautiful paper art. Anyway, I hope to see you next time. Bye!